Good evening, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about implant transformation of tomato to develop salinity stress tolerance. Um, before going into the implant transformation, we also work with uh, tissue culture dependent transformation techniques, so I'll give a little uh, information of that as well. But uh, first of all, why salinity tolerance? As you know, Bangladesh is one of the most vulnerable country um, in terms of climate change. And uh, our 30% of the cultivated land is actually in the northern region, which is our coastal zone. South, southern, exactly, sorry. Okay. Um, the salinity of this area is increasing because of the sea water rise, sea level rise, which is a slow and continuous process. And also because of the climate change, we have lots of tornado storms, etc., which brings about uh, salt water all of a sudden into the land and it gets trapped there. This could our uh, plant breeding process as well as genetic modification which is an ad adequate tolerance. Now rice is our staple fruit, food so lots of work is going on in rice and in the morning uh, there was a um, report where it was said that already we have a transgenic rice uh, in the confined field trial which is actually now getting assessed uh, for salinity stress. I my, my lab was working in, uh, is working on tomato because it has lots of health benefit and also the economic value of tomato is quite high and in the popularity of tomato in our country is increasing, which is why tomato, which used to be a winter crop in our country, now we have summer variety. So, tomato. When we wanted to start our uh, work, a paper which was published in uh, Nature uh, reported that antipoda gene from the Arabidopsis have shown uh, quite a good amount of tolerance towards uh, salinity and that actually um, instigate us to do research with antipoda or vacular antipoda gene and to have salinity stress tolerance in our variety of uh, tomato. But before doing it, we looked into the salt tolerance of our varieties, and we found that in, during germination, germination was uh, severely hampered in presence of uh, salt, and uh, which is why we thought that, okay, we will go for the work. So we targeted our antipota gene, AT, uh, NHX1, from rice as well as from Arabidopsis. Rice was kindly provided by Professor Zebra Islam Shiraz from the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, Dhaka University, in P enter vector. And uh, Arabidopsis antipota gene we isolated from Arabidopsis with, uh, with the sequence uh, getting from the NCBI. We used the getaway technology to incorporate our genes into the uh, transformation vector. So once we uh, got the OS, which is the rice antipoter gene, and AT uh, antipoter genes, which is of two, one is antipoter gene one, and one, another one is ATNHX2, we all clone these two into the P enter vector, which is the first vector in the getaway technology. We confirmed it through PCR and restriction digestion. And then we put it into the destination vector. We actually put it in two vectors. One is hydromycin uh, with the hydromycin selection marker, and the second one was the canamycin selection marker. But later we proceed with the canamycin one. Once the clones were confirmed with uh, sequence um, reading, then we transferred it to the agrobacterium through electroporation. So this is my cloning is done. These are my vector. I worked with the OS NHX1, which is the rice antipoter, and the Arabidopsis antipoter 1. So now comes to the part of the tomato transformation. We all know that tomato transformation have two methods. One is tissue culture based, one is uh, uh, tissue culture independent. In both the cases, we found interesting results. We took, uh, we talked to two research institute, Bangladesh Agriculture Research Institute, Bari, and Bangladesh Institute of Nuclear Agriculture, Bina, and they have provided me, uh, provided us with the, uh, 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 five varieties, Bari tomato two and three, Bina tomato two and three, 
and from Bina, we uh, received um, salt-tolerant variety Bahar. We proceed with the tissue culture. Um, interestingly, when we were uh, doing tissue culture, if we put uh, the explant in only cytokinin, only shoot regeneration was observed, so we had to transfer it to the rooting media uh, for root induction. But if we cultured it with both cytokinin and auxin, spontaneous rooting happened, and this is found in all the varieties. This is picture of Bari tomato 2, 3, Bina tomato 2, Bina tomato 3, and Bahar. Once we have uh, plantlet, we transfer it to the soil, and there it, uh, it flowered and set fruit, just like the normal uh, regenerated, no, normal plants, but it took little time. Those which we transferred in the month of April and May, they took longer time compared to what we, when we um, transplanted the plant in December, November, December, because these are actually our winter crops, so it took little time. But the acclimatization in the natural environment was quite uh, good. In case of body tomato 2, it was 70%. Bite tomato 3 also showed 70%, and so has bina tomato 2, 70%. Little high uh, re uh, response was found in bina tomato 3, which is 80%. But problem was with the Bahar. Bahar acc acclimatization of Bahar plantlets in the nature was very poor, but we still wanted to do our research with the Bahar variety because it's a summer variety. Um, we collected the seeds from the mature plants, and then we looked into the viability of these uh, seeds, which are coming from the in vitro regenerated plants, and compared it with the parent plant, and found that the viability of these two uh, seeds were actually comparable. So we were very happy with our regeneration system. Once we are done with the regeneration system, we move to transformation. And we had a standard protocol of transformation, which starts with optimization of all the factors. We did antibiotic selection, bacterial culture, how dense, what will be the density and the infection time, et cetera, et cetera. So, we had canamycin as our selection marker, so first we see the, how much uh, it can tolerate, and it was 50 milligram per liter canamycin was enough to kill the explants. So we thought that, okay, we will keep it on 50. Um, then in tomato, there, is, there are lots of reports that antibiotic actually put a pressure on uh, regeneration, and especially this is true for any uh, bacteriostatic or bactericidal antibiotic that we use to control the agrobacterium. So as we were thinking of using cefataxim, we did a sensitivity test with cefataxim as well, and we found that up to 100 milligram of uh, cefataxim, the result was pretty good. So we, said, uh, we decided to con uh, continue with cefataxim as our uh, antibiotic. Then we moved to uh, density of the agrobacterium and infection time of the uh, process. And uh, we found that OD needs to be more than one, and there are differences between how much time of infection period you need. This is the report of Arabidopsis uh, thaliana anti antipotent gene, and this is for OS NHX1. And you can see that though it is also having, um, it require a OD of more than one, variety to variety, infection period um, varies. Uh, please mind it that in the getaway, uh, getaway clones, we don't have gas gene, so we were actually uh, considering the regeneration efficiency after the infection as our parameter to th see that how much regeneration we are getting or the uh, optimum concentration or the optimum condition for the infection. Then comes the co-cultivation period, and that is also found to be 24 hours for uh, all the varieties, all five varieties. Um, if we look into the tomato transformation, if we can see that there is, a, there, usually there is a report of using a, a tobacco a cell culture to supply nutrition to the uh, tomato. So 
and we didn't want to add that step. So we were thinking that maybe a preculture before the infection might help us to get regeneration. So we did a preculture and non preculture test, and it, it was found that if we have a preculture in the in the regeneration media, then that transformation and regeneration after the transformation experiment is increased. So we prefer to have uh, preculture for all the five varieties. So we did. Uh, uh, did a transformation with uh, it canamycin arabidopsis antipoter and were uh, happy to get uh, regeneration in pl presence of 50 milligram per liter. To actually remove the non transgenic or less transgenic chim chimerism, we increased the uh, concentration of the canamycin up to 100 level. This is a picture of uh, 50 milligram per liter in Arabidopsis antipoter. This is 50 milligram uh, per liter canamycin in Oryza sativa. Then we Im increase it to 100 milligram per liter, and uh, that was a blunder. Uh, most of the plant died, or they stopped growing in in both the cases, Arabidopsis as well as uh, rice and antipoter. We repeated this experiment by continuing 50 milligram, but unfortunately, none of the shoot grew to a size which can be transferred to um, rooting media. So that stopped our work here in the tissue culture dependent transformation. So we decided, okay, we will shift to implant a transformation technique to develop our transgenic. So, Again, the normal procedure of the uh, implanter transformation we mm, proceed with. And first we did the uh, factor analysis. And OD was again found to be more than one suitable for the transformation and 30 minutes of infection in uh, Arabidopsis as well as uh, for um, rice antipoter gene. Then for co-cultivation, it was found to be De variety dependent, but 24 hours. Once we have done our infection with the whole embryo, there are many methods of um, transformation in, for implanta, but we preferred embryo pricking. Then we uh, saw that the seed germination after the infection was similar to that of the control, but the time requirement for the germination was much longer. When we looked into the in vitro growth of these plants, control plants were much healthier, they're bigger, compared to those which were infected. When we looked into the um, rooting uh, morphology, root morphology, we found that the root of the infected plants were weaker, unbranched, shorter, and interestingly, there is, without any doubt, a bent at the junction of the root and the shoot. It's without any doubt, all the infected plants, uh, regenerated plantlets, had it. Then we uh, compared the height and root length of these infected and non-infected. We worked here with the only the uh, Bina 3, uh, Bina uh, variety, which is Bina Tomato 2, 3, and Bahar. And we found that the control plant has doubled the height compared to the infected one. And their root length is also double. Time requirement, however, is double in case of those which are, have been infected. Then we shifted these plants to natural environment. And after two months, uh, we started uh, taking data from it. Um, Bina tomato 3 and, Bina to and Bahar, uh, the rate of su uh, survivability in the natural environment was uh, similar in case of control and the uh, infected ones in these two varieties. However, Bina tomato 2 showed a drastic reduction in survivability. Uh, when we grew them for two months, then we looked into the morphological characteristics and as well as the reproductive characteristics. And we found that the af after two months, the average uh, height of the plant, the control as well as the infected, putative transformed now we can say, 
are similar. Similarly, the leaf surface was same, which means within two months, the, the transgenic, putative transgenic plant recovered uh, the, their poor health, which they showed in the in vitro condition. However, the time they took is a little longer. And then uh, the flowering response, flowering was more or less same, but flowering took longer time in the infected plants compared to the control. And same thing happened in the uh, fruit response. So though the better uh, flowering and fruiting response was found in all three varieties after infection, but the time requirement was an issue. Uh, instead of going into the molecular data, we looked into the bioassay of the salinity, and uh, it was found that in case of control plants, which was not transgenic, even in presence of five millimolar of uh, salt, that control plant bleached in two weeks' time, and if the concentration increases to 100 millimolar, it uh, bleaches in three days. However, we had around 150 plants of different th th three different varieties, and uh, out of that, three plants showed tolerance at 100 millimolar salt for um, uh, 14 days. So this is the pictures. The upper panel is non-transformed leaf disc, and the lower panel is transformed ones. This is five millimolar, 10, 20, 50 and 100. So controls are still green and the non transgenic ones are all necrotic. So one was like, why only three plants out of 120? Why we didn't have any transgenic coming out of our tissue culture? These are the questions that we are still working on and uh, that's where we are now at the moment. So we have transgenic uh, method uh, already mo moving into our lab and we are working in it. And we thank Bangladesh Academy of Science and Bas USD Endowment Fund to support our this research. And these are three um, intelligent students of mine who are now pursuing their PhD in different continent who actually did this work during their masters. Thank you all.